All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to clean the carburetor out on a Yamaha Wolverine here. Um, this thing has a stutter once it gets warmed up, um, so the carburetor is probably dirty or clogged somewhere. But first, I wanna give a huge shout out to SuperClean. They sent me these products to try, but it's honestly become my go-to cleaner and degreaser around the shop. I've been really impressed with its cleaning power, so to show that, I put the regular SuperClean to the test against Oil Eater, Simple Green, and Purple Power, all undiluted by applying the product, scrubbing the surface, then rinsing it off with water. As you could probably tell, SuperClean was able to clean off years worth of grime much better than any other product I tested, which is why I would recommend SuperClean to anyone else looking for a good, tough task cleaner and degreaser. SuperClean also makes a variety of other great products such as a floor absorbent, SuperClean foaming, an aerosol cleaner, and a wheel cleaner as well, so be sure to go check them out. So the first step is gonna to be to take the carburetor off, and in order to do that, what we're gonna do is first, drain all the fuel out of the fuel bowl. Um, the way you can do that is just pull this screw out a little bit and that'll drain your fuel bowl through this line here, which should be there. If it's not there, you should put one on and that should run to the back of your quad and come out. Mine comes out right there. So once you loosen that, it'll drain off and you can drain that into a uh, fuel container. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and pull the fuel lines off. Then you can go ahead and remove or loosen the screws on the hose clamps for both intake boots going from the air box and then into the engine. So we're just gonna loosen those with a number two Phillips. There's one there and one there. And you're just gonna wanna pull this cover off by taking off these four screws. Once you do that, you can just go ahead and push that whole plate up and then slide out your throttle cable just like that. And then this little guy on the end here might pop off. Just kind of slide it over and then pull it off, but don't lose that. Once you do that, you can just pull the carb out and then loosen that uh, right there, that uh, bolt piece there where the throttle cable enters the carburetor. So just unscrew that and then pull the throttle cable right off. Once you get that cable off, you should be able to remove it from the quad. And the first thing we're gonna check here is the fuel bowl. So you're gonna get a number two Phillips head. Just take out these four screws, securing the fuel bowl onto the carb. Once you get those out, you should be able to just pull it right off. And that'll expose our fuel bowl. And you can see here in this one, there is a good amount of dirt in there. Um, it should be completely clean, but in this case, unfortunately it's not. But we'll be able to clean that out and make it as good as new. So set that aside. Next, we're gonna look into the float. First, we're gonna make sure that's functioning properly. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is just turn it over. Make sure this is moving right. If you want, you can go into the surface manual and actually measure the distance that this travels. There is a, a tolerance for that, but I believe mine is in spec. Once we can verify that that's moving freely, we're gonna look into each jet, which is I think is my issue here. So one of these might be slightly clogged. So in order to take these out, we're just gonna get a flathead. There's one here, one here, and this is actually not a jet. This is a... Uh, your fuel air mixture for your idle. So that'll, you adjust that by um, turning it all the way in and then the stock setting is two full turns out and that should allow your quad to idle properly. But I am gonna take this out anyway and spray it out with carb cleaner just to make sure it's not clogged. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these out and I'm also gonna pull off this, uh, this float here. The way you do that is there's a uh, pin securing it in place. You just pull the pin out. Once you pull that out, you can just pull off the float just like that. And you'll see there's also a uh, needle and seat, which is right there. And if you look at this closely and there's a groove in it, that means it's actually worn out and you may experience um, flooding in, in your carburetor, overfilling with fuel, and that's the reason why. So you should get a new uh, neat, uh, needle and seat and then the uh, spot where it goes into right there. So set that aside. It also helps to use a good quality screwdriver because I see a lot of these uh, that are just stripped out and that's mainly due to people using a bad quality screwdriver or over tightening these jets when they put them back in place. And you really don't need to tighten these that much. They are uh, pretty delicate and they won't come out. So just don't tighten them that much. Just, just get them snug. So you can see this is your idle jet. And you should be able to see through that. If you look through it, you should be able to see light. And you can see you can see a little bit through this, but we're still gonna clean that out anyway, just in case there is a little bit of dirt in there. 
This is your main jet. This is the jet you're gonna adjust if you put like an exhaust on it or something. So this allows the amount of fuel into your engine. You can see the stock size is a 145. You can see that right there. So we're gonna blow this out as well. And then now since they're out, we're also gonna blow out these passages where they go into as well, right after I take out this jet. Or sorry, this adjustment screw. So you can see the assembly for this. There's a spring and then a little O-ring in there as well. So make sure all those comes out before you uh, spray carb cleaner through there. So once we have all those out, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take this outside, spray my carb cleaner through all these passages as well as this one and this one. And this is where the fuel comes in. It goes right through there and into there. And I'm actually going to blow the carb cleaner in through this way because there's a screen in there so everything should be trapped on the other side of this and the way to get all that out is just by spraying it through this side because if you spray it through this side it's just going to get caught in the screen you don't want that so just blow it out through this side and if you really want to you can also take out this screw and uh, clean out the screen you can take, take this whole piece out and clean it that way as well actually before i take this outside i want to also take the top off of this too so this carburetor has a vacuum actuated um, slide here just like that, so as more air goes through this piece here, it forces air into a uh, diaphragm up here, and that will lift this up, and I'll show you that in a second here. So you just wanna take out all these screws that hold the top cover in place. All right, that'll pop off just like so. See there's a spring in there, you can just remove that, set that aside. This is the diaphragm I was talking about. You wanna check and make sure this is not ripped. If it is ripped, you can go ahead and replace it. Mine is not, so I'm just going to go ahead and carefully pull it off here. And you can see it's connected to that slide and the needle there. And you can also adjust. This needle has different positions on it. You see the sir clip? You can remove that sir clip and move it into a different groove if you want to adjust how much fuel goes into the engine. Um, but mine is running fine how it is, so I'm going to leave it like that. So we're going to set these two aside. And as you can see up here, this should also be pretty clean. But if we look in here, there is a bit of dirt, which we don't want. So we're going to go ahead and clean that out. There's also a jet right there, which I'm going to remove. And it looks just like that. See, that one definitely looks clear, but we'll go ahead and clean it anyway. Set that aside. There's an O-ring up here. Take that out. Anything that's going to come in contact with carb cleaner or any rubber, um, carb cleaner will eat away at any rubber, so you want to go ahead and remove all that. And take off this uh, diaphragm under here with these three screws. And you want to be careful removing this because there's a spring under there that will shoot out. You can feel it when you're taking it off, so I'm holding this cover down as I'm taking the screws out. All right, and now that those are out, I'm just pop this off. Careful that spring there. Let's see in there, it's a bit dirty. Blow that off with compressed air because we don't want to use a carb cleaner on the rubber parts. Set that aside. Here's the diaphragm in there. I believe this is for the choke. So you're going to want to check and make sure that this isn't ripped either. And wow, there's a lot of dirt inside of there. So I believe this is my issue actually. Um, I can't give it more than about half throttle or it'll bog down. So I think this is, it's engaging the choke basically, I think is what's going on. But yeah, that's a lot of dirt in there and that shouldn't be in there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean all this off, including this diaphragm, but with compressed air. So I'm going to go outside and do that and don't lose this O-ring that goes there either. So I'm going to go outside and just spray this whole thing off. Now that I have everything cleaned off here, there's one more thing I want to check, and that's the choke here. So in order to get the choke out, you just take off this nut here. It can be a little bit tricky to get to, but this one luckily wasn't on too tight, so I was able to get it with pliers. You can see it pops off like that. Once that happens, you can just pull this right out, and there's an O-ring on there that you don't want ripped or lost. And if you look inside of there... This is a bit dirty, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this out with carb cleaner and spray this off with the compressed air. Now that that's all clean, I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together. So first the choke, just like we took it out, just slide it right back in. Now that that's in place, we're going to go ahead and put this jet back in. It goes right there, just like that. Go ahead and go underneath, put these jets back in. 
like I said before, this just goes in snug. You don't need it too tight. Just like that. Next, this jet. Next, your idle adjustment. So, like I said before, just thread this all the way down until it's tight. You don't have to tighten it super tight, just, just until it's finished going in. All right, so right there, I could feel it be uh, all, the, all the way in. So now I'm going to go ahead and go exactly two turns out. It's one half, one, one and a half, two. So that should be adjusted properly. Next, we're going to install the fuel bowl, and, or actually the float and needle. This goes just like so. Make sure that needle goes into that seat there. Throw this pin back in. Most carburetors, it just slides right in. You don't have to force it in or anything. And make sure that's functioning properly. This one is. Next, get your O-ring here. Well, not the spring. Just get the O-ring. Make sure that's on the fuel bowl. See, that's nice and clean now. Reinstall that. So that's all back together. Flip it over to the side here. We're going to put back together the choke assembly, this diaphragm. So we're going to make sure this is all dry and clean and not ripped. If it is ripped, go ahead and replace it. So we're going to install that. It goes in there just like that. There is an O-ring that went right there, just like that. Next, this piece and the spring. Put the spring right on there. Alright, so next is this top piece here. We're going to put the diaphragm in. Make sure this little uh, kind of bump on the end there lines up with the bump on the casting of the carburetor there. That's going to go in just like that. Try and seat, set this down in the uh, groove there so it seals nice and tight. Drop this needle down. Once those are in place, take your cover here, put that on, make sure this hole there lines up with the hole right here. Make sure this lines up with that, with the O-ring. Just put that on like so. And just like that, your carburetor is all back together and ready to go back on the machine. But before you do that, just make sure that the uh, intake and then the exhaust of the carburetor is all put to, put back together and, uh, well, obviously put back together, but clean and free of any dirt or contaminants. And under there, right, make sure this opens and closes freely and doesn't bind up. And other than that, you should be good. So we're good, just going to go ahead and reinstall this on the quad. Once you put the throttle cable on, just make sure that it goes all the way down to idle, which this is your idle speed adjustment. So make sure it's touching that. And then it goes all the way up to full throttle, which would be when that plate touches the body of the carburetor. So you can see mine's doing that there. It goes all the way back down and everything goes smoothly. So just do that a couple times, make sure it's working good. And then you can put that cover back on. All right, so this thing is running really good now. Everything's back on. And by the way, if you're looking for a good aftermarket carburetor, uh, Zoom Zooms can be hit or miss, but this is a Zoom Zoom carburetor. It's like a performance one. I'm not sure if it actually added any performance, but it definitely ran good with it when I first put it on and it runs great now. So that's a good aftermarket carburetor if you're looking for one for one of these Wolverines, but works great now. Idle's good. It revs up great. So that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.